Hello and welcome to a concept review module on datums. It's going to cover a review of horizontal and vertical datums. I'm Ann Johnson, Associate Director for the Geotech Center, a National Science Foundation grant to support geospatial community college programs. This is a review module and I want to stress that it's review. If you need more in-depth knowledge, then there are model courses and other resources from the Geotech Center that may help you. We're going to look at the shape of the earth and really define the word datum. What does it mean? We'll look at two specific types of datums, both horizontal and vertical, and we'll look at why there are so many datums and how they've changed over time. We'll specifically look at NAD 27 and NAD 83 and what's going to happen in the future. We'll also look at a comparison between a coordinate system and a map projection and the use of datum. Mainly, too, we're going to stress the importance of using the correct datum if you're going to be doing any kind of analysis. You know, the Earth from space, we look pretty much like a, a nice spherical globe, but Unfortunately, we're really an oblate spheroid, so we're just slightly squished and pear-shaped. And uh, while it's not a perfect sphere, it's also lumpy, so it's not a smooth surface. Not only that, we think of the Earth as pretty unchangeable, but it really does change over time. So how are features located uh, on the surface of the Earth, and how do features relationships between features, each of them having their own location, uh, documented? The Oxford Reference Dictionary defines datum as the starting point from which something is measured or calculated, and we use those starting points for our datums in geospatial technology. So for a geographic coordinate system, we have Two co a coordinate grid of latitude and longitude, and the starting point of those grids are its datum starting points are the prime meridian and the equator. So latitude and longitude are based on that starting point. For projected coordinate systems or map projections, we use mathematics to calculate the transformations between that 3D surface to a 2D surface, but we require two inputs, right? We need a datum, which defines the starting point for the locations or the reference to be calculated from, and a spheroid that models the shape and the size of the Earth. So horizontal datums, we use a model, and that model is created by taking an ellipsoid and rotating that ellipsoid around its short axis to create a spheroid. While we think of the Earth as not a perfect sphere, it's pretty close. It's only one 297th off of a perfect sphere. So horizontal datums have a starting reference point, and we're going to look at the two for NAD 27 and NAD 83. So the North American datum of 1927 is based on a reference point in Kansas. It's a survey station at Meade's Ranch. So that is the starting point from which everything is measured. It also uses a model of the Earth, which is the Clark 1866 ellipsoid, and that gives us the shape and the size of the Earth for that particular datum. The North American horizontal datum of 1983 is a bit different. It actually uses the geocentric origin, or the center of the Earth, as its starting reference point, and it was determined using uh, Global Navigation Systems, or GNSS. It also uses the geodetic reference system of 1980 as its ellipsoid model, and it's slightly larger than that 1986-6 Clark ellipsoid. Many times this has been calculated, and more and more times the observations have been made, but uh, and it's continuing to be refined. The vertical datum is quite different. I mean, how do we say the elevation of the ocean or the zero elevation? Where is the surface of that? And um, it's not easy because different sea levels may have different actual differences from the center of the Earth. 
but they what was decided was many local regions didn't really care about the rest of the world. It only cared about its local uh, elevation. So it had its zero point. So that was part of the problem with vertical datums is each was unique to its location. Beginning in 1991, the U.S. National Spatial Reference System was created with a North American vertical datum of 1988. It has been used to adjust an elevation based on a zero elevation based at Father Point in Quebec, Canada. Why are there so many different datums? And there are just literally hundreds of them. Well, the accurate location of spheroid requires that size and shape of the Earth, right? And up until modern uh, measurement techniques, it wasn't an easy number to calculate or determine. And it's also a very uneven, our lumpy Earth, so it's not easy to incorporate it into a model. And there were literally hundreds of datums created, both uh, mainly because each regional difference really needed its own datum. So a, a place that didn't care about anything but its local created its own datum and its horizontal and vertical reference system for its own needs. When we went to not just local and regional mapping and global perspective, then we needed to have common datum so that items can be, all features could be located accurately. For very, very accurate global measurements, we actually go to a geoid figure. And this one adjusts the best spheroid, taking into account the variation of gravity locally. And this is based on the fact that if a, a geoid is higher than the local reference spheroid, wherever there is a positive or, or more mass excess, and it's lower than the reference ellipsoid where there is a negative or gravity anomaly or mass deficit, so it changes. For more information about this, uh, more specific ones for the vertical datums and geoids, there's a really good uh, link to NOAA. So updating datums, the World Geodetic System in 1984 is a new datum. It uses GNSS to define the ellipsoid, so it's similar to uh, NAT83, but it actually uses a slightly better correction for the center of the Earth as a starting reference point. And it uses a different algorithm to actually calculate uh, the location that was used in NAT83. This is another good reference about how that was changed and, and what it means. There are ways to transform data from that NAD83 to NAD84, and it can be calculated. And there are new efforts underway to combine both horizontal and vertical uh, datums into one datum. And uh, it will use the more accurately determined Earth-centered starting reference point, but it will also have an additional thing, a key, that will be tied to a date and time because the Earth is dynamic. It does change over time. So tectonic forces, gravity anomalies, and other things locate, uh, uh, cause the location of features on the Earth to change. So vertical can subside due to volcanic activity. It can rise or lower. Plate tectonics shifts things as earthquakes cause um, movement uh, on plate boundaries. And technology now exists that can update these frames and use it to define locations globally. So we'll have horizontal vertical datums that are keyed to a time. It was supposed to be done in 2022, but unfortunately some things came and got in the way of that date. And it will be uh, updated, but it, it really does affect a lot of different things and laws and regulations and you know, flood control maps and other things need to also be um, taken into account. There's a really good set of videos from NOAA about this whole datum project. So what's the difference between the geographic coordinate systems and map projections and taking that 
globe to that flat map. Well, a geographic coordinate system can be used to really accurately locate features on a spherical Earth, and it's using latitude and longitude. The important thing here, it's not uh, the size of the Earth is not a factor because the distance is calculated in degrees and not in units of distance, such as feet, meters, or miles. Map projections, on the other hand, can be used to create a flat map using that datum in the model of the real world. So it actually has size and shape taken into, point, into uh, consideration as well as that starting reference point. And it uses distance units. So instead of using decimal degrees, it uses meet, meters, feet, miles, kilometers. And that's another important thing is make sure when you use a map projection, you know what the units represent. Also to be aware that some same map projections can use different, be based on different datums and different meet, uh, distance units. So make sure that you're using the correct datum and that you understand its uh, units of measure. It's also changed over time. So if you bring in data from earlier periods, it, it is often necessary to transform it to the mo more modern uses. Datums are important because it will shift things. If you've ever seen, uh, gone out to the internet and looked at maps and suddenly the parcels in your streets do not line up, it's often because one set of data the underlying map may be in one datum and the data on top is in another and it will shift things and it can be tens to hundreds of feet. You can see the further away you are from the central United States, the more the shift can vary. So why is this important? Well, it's important for a lot of different things. Just state boundaries have changed with datum shifts. Um, wrong locations for real world features. You know, victims in a disaster, you need to know where they are. And you, if you're off by 100 meters or more, you may not be able to find them. Also, if you have property, you want to know if you're in the floodplain or not in the floodplain or landslide location. Of course, for aircraft, you do want to know the elevation and the location of towers. Many uh, geological processes also use need accurate locations such as earthquake faults or landslides, volcanic activity. Our navigation systems and our cars, if they give us the wrong direction, it can be very dangerous. So software and data transformations can occur. Just be cautious. The same map projection can be based on different datums and they can change over time and the data must be transformed. A lot of software will project your uh, data on the fly. So it will do reprojection of your map uh, projection, but it's data transformation. You'll often get a warning and saying it's in a different datum. Do you want the datum transformed? And yes, if you're going to do any kind of analysis on your data, you should make sure that you have transformed your data to all be in the same datum. So Reproject and datum transformations need to be performed. One may be automatic by your software, the other one you may have to carry out yourself. There are more information on map projections and re concept review modules. There's also courses available that can go into more depth. If you have any comments, please do contact me. Thank you.